Hey, housemates, wanna play Chicken Caesar? So this is kind of a strange game thematically. I mean, it's ripe for puns. And maybe the whole thing started with one cheap pun. I mean, one silly pun. And, you know, the whole thing just got out of hand. But look, there's way too many games themed on ancient Rome. Wait, there's a Warhammer Armies of Antiquity supplement for ancient battles? So you can play Warhammer in ancient Rome? Yeah. <clears throat> but you know what there is not enough of? Chicken-themed games. Seriously, I can only find like three. And this one's out of print. Well, cluck that. Let's scratch the surface, ruffle some feathers, and see what this game has to crow about. We will all have these pawns, which represent the members of our family. Now, to begin the game, we set all these pawns throughout the board, and each office in the chicken coop has specific duties. Offices closer to Caesar are, you know, a bit more important, but the lower offices can often have more influence in the execution of their jobs. So let's take the job of Caesar. Now, this job has the most points to award, but Caesar has only one optional job, and it, it shouldn't be surprising that the chicken elected Caesar tends to end up dead a lot. A dead chicken can't do any more to further the agenda of the family. Asterisk. Meanwhile, the humble praetor is a kind of magistrate who will continue to influence the military for years to come, so we'll need to make sure our families have a strong influence in all levels of the political body. As chickens get killed off, one way or another, chickens will move up from lower offices to fill the higher positions, and a family with high ambitions might pack the consul office to monopolize the office of Caesar for many generations. But we must be careful to mind the young upstarts coming in from the office of Quaestor and Adile. Bear in mind, it is the Adile who gets to decide the tax rate and higher taxes have a direct correlation to civil unrest, which has a direct correlation to Caesar's health and longevity. In every round of the game, whoever managed to hold their office, even if they were assassinated, gets an award for their service to duty. These awards are essentially the indicators of who gets what points. The family with the best awards at the end of the game wins. But, but, but wait, there was an asterisk back there, something about dead chickens furthering an agenda? A dead chicken can't do any more to further the agenda of the family. Asterisk. Ah, well, you see, the office of the consul has the solemn job of deciding which monuments get erected and for whom. Because what's the point of a legacy if you don't put your name on a few buildings and arches? If our family has some extra accolades lying around, we can try to get those added to the past accomplishments of a long dead chicken. You guys, I gotta be honest. This might be my favorite part of this entire game. The idea that our family legacy is as great as we say it is. So there's a bunch of Latin and Roman references in this game. Some are puns and some are just obscure. Happily, one of our housemates took four years of Latin. Also, I'm very clever. So here's a quick rundown on some of the ancient concepts used in this game. The office of Caesar should really be emperor, but quite a few emperors took the surname of Caesar. Before there was an emperor, Rome would be led by usually two consuls. The emblem of their office is a bundle of sticks around a long axe. These are called fasces, which are used as the award of office, and are the root of the modern word fascist. The game uses the word fermente, which is Latin for corn. Basically, as chickens, we use a corn-based economy. The censor in this game gets to send one chicken into exile, but in Rome, the censor would have been a highly respected social elder. He would be in charge of taking the census, among other things, but he also had the ability to establish social values and could even revoke a man's citizenship. The inside edge of the box proclaims Pax Gallinarii. This alludes to the phrase Pax Romana, which referred to a long period of stability and imperial prosperity under Roman rule. Gallinarii refers to the chicken coop, though this is kind of pun on piece of chicken. Piece of chicken. Piece of chicken. Get it. 
All throughout the game, there's a bunch of opportunities to vote on how things happen and to whom. And we can negotiate our way through anything. The rules explicitly say that we are encouraged to negotiate for votes and favors through the game. Players are free to make promises, but only promises bought with coins must be honored. Almost every action a player can take may be bought with coins or favors. Whom the Praetorium will have assassinated. What actions Caesar will have vetoed. And on and on and on. Every action worth doing may be bought in this game. Some parts of this game might seem a little complex, and we can probably get slogged down by voting and bribing and grandstanding for every little thing. But I think it makes sense for whoever is Caesar to keep the game moving, or perhaps the rabble in the quest store can be a kind of peanut gallery to keep the game at pace. As long as someone remembers to keep the game moving, we'll be okay. <music> Wow, only like two chicken puns so far? Huh. All right, uh, this game is impeccable. It is extraordinary. The rules are a smidge confusing, so we might need to wing it. We will clutch our awards and come home to roost. Anyway, uh, whenever there aren't enough chickens to fill the offices or not enough office insignias to fill the chickens, uh, or everyone in the entire family is dead, the game is over. All offices and insignias across our entire family get added up and sorted into sets for points. Whoever has the most points wins this wicker duck. Really? Really, you guys? We couldn't find a wicker chicken? Ooh, wicker chicken. Wicker. Housemates, I'll see you at the game table. Wicker chicken duck, duck, wicker chicken duck, wicker chicken duck, duck, wicker chicken duck.